my name is Shanna and welcome to day 7 of the Because We Can Readathon Disney Animation Edition. Today is the final day of the readathon which means that the three hosts got together and created a video on the official Because We Can Readathon YouTube channel page. If you have made a video for today then you need to link your entry in the comment section of that video. That one was a lot of fun. The challenge for today was the Tangled When Will My Life Begin challenge. In that first song Rapunzel does a lot of different activities so we wanted you to show us one or more of the activities. The three hosts got together and we overachieved and we did all of them and uh, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. But on my personal page we also created a Disney tag that you guys are welcome to do after the readathon or if you have time to do it during the readathon that would be amazing. And it is a Disney tag. I know there are a couple of Disney tags on YouTube already however we created one that we tailored to the Because We Can readathon. There are 12 questions so let's get started. Question number one, Moana. Name a book where a character goes on a journey to find themselves. Honestly, I think we can all agree that basically any good book ever involves a character who goes on a journey to find themselves. It's the same in film, it's the same in television. The real crux of stories is when characters, they change throughout the novel, they change throughout the story. And so basically you could pick any book for this question ever. But I have gone with Wings by April and Pike. I'm talking about the character of Laurel. So one morning Laurel wakes up and she discovers that she has a flower growing out of her back which kind of a little bit look like wings and she realizes that her life is probably not the one that she has been living. And she then has to sort of figure out, she has to talk to her parents and she's got to figure out why do I have these wings? Am I a fairy? Where do I come from? Are these my real family? Like I just need to know. So she all of a sudden has all of these questions that she has to ask herself and she has to try to figure out. She ends up on a journey slight thing. They end up doing a lot of like science experiments which is really really cool. Her and her friend David they do a lot of experiments on the wings to try to figure out what they are and where she's come from and then of course they go on actual journeys where they end up in Avalon. Like it's a whole thing. It's a fantastic little series and Laurel definitely goes on a journey. She starts as this normal human teenager and by the time the series is over she is not that anymore. <laughs> Question number two. Frozen. Name a book that focuses on family. For this one I'm going with The First There by Will Kostakis. This book focuses on a boy named Billy and is very family oriented. It's a Greek family so they're very family first and his grandmother talks about life being in three different thirds. The three thirds are the first third is where you are embarrassed by your family, the second third is where you make a family for yourself and the third third is where you embarrass the family that you've just made and this book focuses on Billy when he is in his first third when his family is embarrassing him. The entire book is just from beginning to end full of a big happy family with you know a few moments that are not so happy because that's what all families are and it was fantastic. It was really good and definitely, definitely family filled. Question number three, the princess and the frog. Name a character who messed with something they really shouldn't have. For this one I'm going with Tell from Caraval. Now it's been a hot minute since I read this book but I know that Tell ends up disappearing right when, oh you know what, just side note this cover is gorgeous. I'm really mesmerizing in the viewfinder, what the hell? Okay, anyway. So in this book we follow Tell and Scarlet who are two sisters who finally get invited to Caraval which is like a mystical mystery carnival I think. Like I said it's been a minute since I've read it. We actually follow Scarlet in this book because when they get invited Tell it disappears. And it's not until the end of the book that you realize what has happened to Tell and what she's done and you sort of sit there and you go, oh Tell you probably shouldn't have done that. You are definitely messing with things that you just absolutely don't understand and I believe that she is the focus of book two which I haven't actually read so I think going forward in the story we get more of an idea of what she's done and what she knows but in this one in particular by the time you get to the end of the book you're just looking at Teller going you don't even understand what you've done why would you do something like that and that is just I feel like that's a lot with a lot of characters you look at them and you're like do you understand what you've done and Teller she definitely didn't at least at the end of this book she's she's in trouble. Question number four, Tarzan. Name a character who is super out of their element. I am going with North from the other side of the sky for this one. So in this book we follow two characters. We follow Prince North and we follow Nim. Nim lives in the world below and North lives up in the clouds but something happens and he ends up falling from the clouds onto the ground below and he meets Nim and she sort of has to help him you know to try to get home. And he is so out of his element down below and it's really interesting because while he sort 
of knew about them and she sort of knew about him. It's been I think a thousand years since the two interacted and so things are very very different. Up in the sky they are all about science and they can explain everything mechanically and scientifically whereas down below Nim is all about magic and not being able to explain things apart from a you know mysterious mystical force that causes things to happen and so it's really interesting to see how North sort of starts to question everything that he's known. He questions all of his science stuff and he questions the fabric of the universe. Really. He questions the fact that he's always known how things work and now that he's down below he's like oh I can sort of figure out how that works but that I've got no answer for but he doesn't want to say that it's magic because he's fully like magic doesn't exist what? So the whole time North is incredibly out of his element because he is just not prepared for a life on the ground. Question number five The Lion King. Name an animal or creature from a book that you either would or would not want to meet. I am going with an animal that I would want to meet and that is Soraya from the Midoran Chronicles. So Soraya shows up in Greyvale. She is cute. She is a shadow wolf, I think. A shadow wolf? I believe it's a shadow wolf. But basically she is Alex's best friend. She does everything. She is like the best dog. She's not a dog. She's a wolf. And her, Alex's teachers are like, mm, I don't really know if you should be keeping a wolf on the campus, but like, okay, because it's Alex and she gets away with stuff. And I love Soraya. She's so cute. And the way she's described is just adorable. She's like black with like a little white paw. Or she's white with a little black paw. Pretty sure she's black with a little white paw. Well, I'm, it's been a minute since I've read this book and I don't quite remember Soraya because she's not like my fave. But I love her. Yeah, she's not my fave, but I love her. No, she's, I'm not, like you guys know me, I'm not a huge animal person. Like give me a lizard any day. But I couldn't actually find a book that was like a lizard as a companion because I absolutely would have picked that one. If anyone could find me a book where a character has like a lizard as a companion, please let me know because I want that. I've also completely gone off on a tangent, which is not great. So we're going to get back to Soraya. She's cute. I know that she's one color and then oh, she has one paw that's another color. I just can't exactly remember which way it is. Either way, she's great. She can do some pretty cool stuff and she's always there to get Alex out of scrapes when she needs it because let's be real, Alex needs to get out of scrapes a lot. Question number six, Beauty and the Beast. Name a character you like that you probably shouldn't. I tried not to be predictable with my answer here and like I dare anyone to guess what I pick but I picked Sebastian Morgenstern from the Mortal Instruments series and that's because every time I talk about him on my channel I have to seriously think about it to myself and be like Jenna he murders a 10 year old he's a really 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 horrible person and yet I absolutely would do anything for him. I'd be like, yeah, sure, let's go. Like, I just, I feel like I would, I would, just to clear everyone's mind, I would draw the line at murdering the 10 year old. Like if I found out he did that and we were dating, I'd be like, dude, all right, we need to take some time apart so we can evaluate our life choices. But I just love him. I really do. I mean, that's a really bad thing that he does. And I will acknowledge that's horrific. But like the rest of it, I'm like, it's not that bad. And I love him. And I am always always concerned by my sanity whenever I talk about Sebastian Morgenstern, but I just can't help it. Question number seven, The Little Mermaid. Name an object from a book you had a hard time imagining. For this one I'm actually going to go with the Alethiometer from the His Dark Materials series and that's because until I saw the, well actually I saw the Golden Compass film first and I saw the Alethiometer there and I was like okay and then I read the books and was like what I saw on screen and what Lyra is, descri like, is describing I can't get my head around it so I was always using like the movie as the alethiometer in my head but then reading it I was like I can't if I didn't have that picture I would not be able to picture it because I was like it's like a clock but it's not then it's like a compass but it's not and like it's gold but it's not and there were just all these things and there's like all these symbols around it and I'm like are they like hieroglyphic symbols and how do they work because Lyra's always like winding stuff but then the stuff is moving on its own and I was just sitting there reading this book going if you asked me to conjure an alethiometer I couldn't do it like if if someone created a device where like you put like a hat on and you imagine something and then like it shows up as a picture on a screen. If you told me when I was reading this book, picture the alethiometer, I'd be like, I can't. I just can't do it. And it would just be a blob. I really like the look of the alethiometer in the His Dark Materials TV show though. I think it's like A++. But from the book's description, I'm like, I got nothing. Question number eight, Sleeping Beauty. Name a character you want to put asleep for a hundred years. 
Absolutely, that is Teresa from the Maze Runner series. I hate Teresa, and I've hated her since the first book. That's the thing, like, she's a horrible person. But in the first book, in the first film, everyone I spoke to was like, no, I love Teresa, she's great, she's fantastic, like, she's just helping. And I'm sitting there going, no, there's something about her that's just not right. She's just, she's not a, she's not a good person. And then, of course, we get to the end of the third book where, like, a thing happens, and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm not I'm not on board with this and it's not until you read the fever code which came out years later and is the fifth book but like the second prequel so it takes place right before Maze Runner I was validated by reading that book my hatred for Teresa everyone understood because everyone started hating her too I felt so validated I was like yes she is the worst person and it, we can just yeet her off a cliff because I don't like her and I absolutely would put her to sleep for a hundred years but like without hope of waking up. So. Question number nine, Peter Pan. Name a fictional world you want to visit. I am going with Narnia for this question. I love Narnia. I, I want to be really specific though. I either would want to visit Narnia during the golden era, which is when Lucy, Edmund, Peter and Susan are on the throne, or during like the second golden era, which is when Prince Caspian is on the throne. The only other time it's like a no, like when um, Polly and what's his face? The, the young, oh, I know it's Polly. I can't remember the professor's name, but like when they go, when Narnia isn't really created yet, that's a no from me. When the White Witch is in charge, that's definitely a no from me, but like the Golden Era is like a yes. And then when the Telemarines invade and it's Caspian's uncle who's like taking control and all the beasts are turning back, like all the animals are turning back into beasts and everything's sad and just horrible. Like all that's a, a big no from me as well, but then Prince Caspian takes over and it's great. And then the world starts dying and it's very sad and then you realise that it's actually in heaven all along and it's uh, to be fair the last book of Narnia really did confuse the hell out of me and I'm still a little bit confused I need to like go back and reread it again this is exactly like the end of his dark materials confuses the crap out of me because the end of the Amber Spyglass like I sort of get what they were doing and I'm hoping that the show explains it a lot better like I think they're making new movies of Narnia or possibly a show and if they do that and they do all seven like can they just explain the ending better but yes I very much would like to go to Narnia I think it would be so much fun and relatively safe as well like you look at so many of these fictional worlds and you're like I'd love to go there oh wait except for those things trying to kill me that's why I think going during the golden era would be perfect because there wasn't a lot of things that wanted to murder you during that time like there were animals but not stuff that would want to like actively murder you question number 10 Cinderella which character would you want to be your fairy godmother I'm not gonna lie I stole this answer from Kat because I couldn't like she said it and immediately I was like yeah Yes, there is no other character who fits this question who I would want to be my fairy godmother. That is Magnus Bane from the Model Instrument series. Magnus is amazing. He is fashionable. He's fantastic. He's helpful. He's kind. He's sassy. He has a cat. Like there's everything about him. I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, everything I would want in a fairy godmother. So I'm sitting here being like, hey Magnus, you wanna just like click your finger? I can't click by the way. It's like, I just can't do it. What's the best I can do? So I'll be like, hey Magnus, you wanna just like click your fingers and turn me into a not pumpkin person? I'm awake, I know what's happening. <laughs> Magnus Bane, fairy godmother. It just has a really nice ring to it. Question number 11, Pinocchio. Which character would you want to become a real boy? Now, I would guess that everybody would guess that I would talk about like a villain. And like, yes, I'd love for villains to be, you know, real boys, but I actually have gone with a different character and I have gone with Caden James from the Majoran Chronicles. I love villains. I think they're fantastic, but I don't actually know what I'd do if I came across one in real life. I actually think I would like probably turn around and walk the other way, which is awful. But Caden is so kind and gentle and fantastic and like I would not want to date him he's not bad boy enough for me but he'd be a really great friend he'd just like you'd be having a bad day and he would just be there he'd like bring you hot chocolate and he'd just sit with you and he'd let you vent and he would be just the best friend that you could ask for and you could like give him dating advice with Alex it would just be a whole thing I'd be like yes let's do this because let's be real Kaden and Alex I love them but they're very slow <laughs> neither of them want to make a move and I'm just sitting here reading the books being like just kiss each 
each other and I would be able to tell him that in real life and it'd be great. So yeah, I think I would want to make Caden a real person. And question number 12, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Name seven characters you want to live with. Now, when I was writing this list out, I realized that they were all men and I was like, shit, I need a girl <laughs> just so there's two of us in the house. So there's one female, six males. Okay, here we go. Are you guys ready? I feel like you should be able to guess most of these. So the seven characters I want to live with, Alec Lightwood and Magnus Bain, Alex Jennings and Bear Ronigan. I don't remember his full name, Grey from the Curse of Duck and Lonely series, Geralt of Rivia and Jamie Fraser. So like, think about it. it would be Alec and Magnus would be adorably cute together because like they'd be married and it'd be so cute and they'd be like in one area of the house and then Alex and I would share a room obviously and then you have Bear who would be so sweet and he'd like cook for us and he'd just be adorable we'd have Grey and Geralt who would get along surprisingly well like Grey would teach Geralt how to play King's Ransom and Geralt would teach Grey how to play Gwent and they'd like protect us, it'd be really cute and then we'd have Jamie Fraser who would just be amazing to live with. <laughs> I mean he'd be kind of annoying because he'd be like also he'd try to be protective but he'd try to fight, he'd just, he would be great. So that th those are the seven people that I would, I would want to live with. Mostly guys because girls suck but I feel like Alex and I would get along really really well. I just have this feeling that she and I would like be on the same page. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below some of your answers to these questions because I would absolutely love to know. I hope you have had so much fun participating in round three of the Because We Can Readathon. I can't believe that we've done three rounds and I can't believe that the three rounds are already over. That is just insanity to me. If you like this video be sure to give it a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Stay random. Bye.